Hey everybody, welcome back. In this movie I want to talk about block elements and some ways we can manipulate them uh, using CSS. And uh, let me show you, let me get started here by just showing you, I've got an HTML document open and I'll show you what's going on here so you'll understand how I have things set up. You can see up in the header of the document, I'm going to do my CSS, my styles, I'm just going to put them in the head of the document. I'm not going to worry about an external style sheet at this point because I'm only dealing with one page so I'll just put them in the head. So here we go. And you can see down here in the body I've got a couple elements here that I want to outline. First of all, I've got a div, okay? And you can think of a div as just like a box of content, okay? And so this little box of content, this div, I've given an ID, okay? And the ID here is going to be called container, okay? I gave it that name. Inside the container div, I have a secondary div here. And notice that this is inside the container, okay? And this div, I'm going to give an ID called the text, okay? And inside that, I have a paragraph of text. It's just Greek copy, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to show you some ways you can manipulate this. If I go over and view this HTML document in a browser, this is what it looks like. There's nothing special going on here. <clears throat> it simply is putting my text on the page because I haven't really created any styles. So what we're going to do is let's pop back over to the HTML here for a second. And uh, you can see that I have styles set up here that I'm going to manipulate. I'm going to manipulate the body tag. Okay, so everything in the body. I'm going to show you some stuff you can do with that. I have a div with an ID of container. Okay, so I'm going to manipulate the container div stuff here. And then finally, the div with the ID of text here. And we may add some more to this, but this is what we're going to start with. Okay, the first thing I want to do is you really can't see. You, can, you probably noticed already. Let's go back to the HTML that divs are pretty much invisible on the page until I add styles to them, okay? Um, you really don't notice that the text is inside a box necessarily because it's stretching the full length of the page. Well, you know, these boxes or these divs, if you want to think of them that way, um, they default to a width of the total of the page. So it's going to go all the way across the page because I haven't set it to be anything less. So let's go over to the uh, styles here. And up in uh, our div, the text, I'm going to give this a width, so W-I-D-T-H. I'm going to give this a width of uh, 300 pixels, 300 px, okay? And notice my syntax, I just say width colon 300 px semicolon. Save the document, let's go over, refresh the HTML, and you can see, yes, now I have changed the size of my box. I still don't see the box, it's invisible, but I've given it a width limit of 300 pixels, which is why it no longer stretches the full length of the page. Let's do something else here to uh, so you can see that that div is indeed there and can manip be manipulated. Let's drop a line under width and let's give this, this div a border. Okay, so border, B-O-R-D-E-R. -E the border is going to be colon. We're going to give this a border, uh, just a one pixel black border all the way around the image. Let me show you how the, you would write that out. Um, this, this attribute, this style attribute, is going to look for three things, okay? And so this is how you would write it. I would write border 1px, one pixel, solid, and then let's just say black. Okay, so these three items that it's looking for are the width of the border, the thickness, which is in our case going to be one pixel, the type, which is going to be solid. There are several types you can use here. And then finally the color, which is going to be black. So I could make this a two pixel dotted red if I want, but uh, I'm just going to keep it one pixel solid black for now. So remember you have three, uh, three things you need to list for that attribute. Okay, so let's go back over here now. Let's hit refresh. And you can see now I have a black border around my div. Okay, and maybe that's something I do want in my layout, uh, which is fine, certainly. Um, but right now I've got some visual problems <laughs> from a design perspective, as you can see. The text goes flush to the edge of this, okay? And that really looks cluttered and doesn't breathe very well, and it's, it's just kind of messy. So one thing I might do here, let's go back. Let's deal with, uh, <clears throat> there's kind of two concepts here I want to talk about, margin and padding, okay? And if you're reading the text that I supply or watching this in my class, uh, you'll notice that the margin and padding um, basically define some negative space, okay? Uh, either outside or inside of an object. And margin affects the space outside the object, and padding reflects the space inside the object. So let's talk about padding first, because as you can see here in the HTML example, our text is ramming up to the edge of this border, and I don't want that. I want some negative space in there for it to breathe. So I'm gonna use padding which would affect the interior of this div. Remember, this is the div called the text, so let's go back and let's add some padding. Now, if I just say padding, colon, let's say 20 pixels. This is a lot of padding, but let's see what that looks like. Let's pop back over, refresh, and you can see not only did it affect 
uh, the negative space around there. Now the text breathes a little better, but it also made that div a little bigger. So one thing you have to remember is when you add padding, it will add to the width of the div. Now we're going to come back to this concept later, but uh, sometimes it's hard if you think you got all your math lined up just right and turns out stuff isn't fitting on the page. And that's why you have to consider um, adding some of these digits up when you're done. And like I said, we'll come back to that in a later movie. But right now, you can see that indeed I did add padding to my div. Let's go back and let's add a lot of padding. Let's go for 220. Okay, and refresh. And you can see that yes, now I have a lot of negative space. And you can see that I have 220 pixels of space on four sides. Okay, so here's your left side. You can see that there's a lot of space here. Uh, the top side, there's 220 pixels. The right side and the bottom. Okay. And so you can kind of think of what I just showed you. This is kind of a shorthand, okay? So basically, I've got four sides I'm dealing with, um, and uh, I've, I've kind of condensed them all with one number because it's going to be the same for everyone. So this is a bit of a shorthand. Uh, the other thing I could certainly do is go in and change this from padding to padding-left, and that will only affect the left-hand side. So if you go back here and look, you can see now that it's defaulted to zero padding except for that left side, which is now 220 pixels. So that's one way you could do it. You can use padding-left, padding-top, padding-right, and padding-bottom. But uh, boy, that's a lot to write out. I don't prefer to do that myself. There's an easier way of doing this. Let's say that you do not want equal padding on every side for whatever reason. Let's go back. Let's take padding out. I, I gave it one number here, and it affected all four sides. There's another shortcut. I can give it two numbers here. Let's say padding equals 30 pixels and then 100 pixels. Notice, whoops, 1,000 is going to be outrageous. PX, okay, and then semicolon. Notice I did not put a comma between these two numbers. I just simply said padding, colon, and I said 30 pixels, left a space, and then 100 pixels. Now what the browser does when I've given it two digits is it's going to affect two sets. And the first one is going to be the top and the bottom, and the second one is going to be the left and the right. So now when I re-render this, it's going to have 30 pixels to the top and 30 pixels of padding on the bottom. And then it's going to have 100 pixels on the right and the left. So you can see now we're going to have a really weird rectangle. So let's go back, refresh, and I did not save the document. Remember to save your work, otherwise it won't work. And there you go. You can see now that I have 100 pixels on each side and only 30 pixels on the top and the bottom. So you can control like this. Let's take this one step further. Let's say I want different uh, numbers for each side. Okay, I can give it four numbers and it will treat all four. Now here's the order it starts in for these four numbers. It always starts at the top and rotates. It, you can think of it like a clock. It rotates clockwise and starts at 12 o'clock. So if I give it four numbers, it's going to start with the top. Okay, so let's say I want 30 pixels of padding on the top, and then we're going to go to the right side because we're going clockwise. Let's say 400 pixels. I'm going to make this really obvious. No, no commas, just spaces. Let's say 5 pixels on the bottom and 20 pixels on the left. PX. Remember, you have to put PX or otherwise it doesn't know what your unit of measurement is. I need a semicolon at the end of this. Save the document. Let's go back. Refresh. And now I have some kind of uneven padding. Okay. So that's how you would do that if you want to have, um, you know, I would not use this to correct a layout error, but <clears throat> for some reason, if I have a situation where I do want um, non-equal padding on each side, that's how I do it. So, okay, so there's, there's, there's basically three ways we just looked at. We just looked at, at dealing with the padding, um, one number going all the way around. We looked at padding with two numbers. It affected the top bottom in the first number and then left and right in the second number. Now we did all four sides. And remember, this is very important. It starts at the top at 12 o'clock and goes clockwise. So 30 pixels to the top, and then it goes to the right, the bottom, and the left. Okay, So that's what padding does. Let's, let's delete this and let's go back and say 100 pixels of padding. We'll just go all the way around with that. Now let's look at something called margin real quick. Okay, let's refresh. Now you can see my padding is equal on all sides of 100 pixels. But my, uh, my div here, my square div, is wedged up over on the left-hand side of the page. Let's say for some reason I do want some, some negative space in here to breathe. Now notice there is some space in here, okay? That's because the HTML, the body, has a default margin and padding. Don't worry about that right now. We'll come back in a second and correct that. Um, but anyway, let's say that I want some more room than what's given to me already. Well, let's go back over here. We've used padding to affect the inside of the text. Now we're going to use margin to affect the outside of this layer called the text. So if I go margin, colon, 100 pixels, it's going to not only give me 100 pixels on the inside, but 100 pixels on the outside. So let's go back, refresh the page, 
and there you can see there's 100 pixels here, here, and then over here I just have the browser window open so you're not going to see the 100. If I had this inside of another div and it was colored, you would see the difference. So anyway, so that's kind of you can see what's going on here. Um, we worked with border, okay? We worked with padding, and we worked with margin. Um, real quick, let me show you one other thing. If you want to check this out, let's take the margin out for a second so you can see this in the example. Let's delete that. Let's go back, refresh again. Now you notice there is a little tiny margin up here. That's because, and this is, well, you're just gonna have to go by my word on here. Uh, by default, the browser will give some margin and padding to the body tag. And I think it does this as a default in case somebody who's completely not a designer just puts some text on a web page. It'll make it a little bit readable. It won't flush it all the way over into the corner. So if you want to get rid of that, and that is a control issue with most designers. In fact, I, just about everything I work on, I go up here to the body tag. Let's go ahead and say margin colon zero, and then drop a line and say padding, colon zero. Now notice I did not put PX after the zero. Zero equals zero, and I don't care what measurement you're using, it is always zero. So it's the one unit of measurement. You don't have to put a percentage or a pixel or an EM or whatever after. So I can, I can put pixels if I want, but that's just two characters I wanted to type. Let's go back over, refresh. Wow, look at now you can see our div is flush up in the corner. Okay, so that's kind of how padding, margin, and of course we added a border on these so we can see them. That's how all these work. Um, and the padding, also I will say this real quick before we go, the margin is just the same as the padding. If I want to affect, um, if I want to affect, you know, equal on every side, I just put one number. If I want to affect the top, bottom, and left and right differently, I can put two numbers. And if I want to do each side a little bit different, I can do all four numbers. Um, but you can see that works just like the padding did, and that is for margin. Anyway, there we go. I'll see you next time.